Hello students, welcome to our class today and this is Sir Alex Vasco and this is our lesson one for our class biology one and today we'll be talking about cell theory. What do we mean by theory? So theory is basically a set of principles that explain a phenomenon and it is already researched. This is very different from a hypothesis which is a observation without proper uh, without yet proper experimentation so when we observe something and we assume something because of that observation that is a hypothesis and when we do experimentation to disprove our hypothesis and then come up with a answer with our hypothesis that becomes a theory so when we think of theory do not simply assume that it's something that we assumed in scientific uh, term theory is already explained and supported by data and research so when we talk about cell theory today you will see a lot of scientists who have done research on cells specifically animal cells and plant cells so before we continue on with our uh, discussion let's ask the question first <clears throat> uh, or let's consider this first so how do we know if an object is alive or not so look at yourself how do you know if you are alive or not how do you know if a plant is alive how about a person who is in a vegetative state so meaning they're in a coma are they still alive so some of you may say yes, but the, uh, the question is why? Why are they still considered alive? They're not moving. How is plant considered alive? So today we'll be able to, uh, using cell theory, we'll be able to get in depth more on how scientists consider an object if they are alive or not. And moreover, our goal for today is to be able to explain the postulates of cell theory. So what do we mean by postulates? So we, earlier we discussed about theory and hypothesis. So a postulate is something that is assumed or suggested that is true as the basis for reasoning, discussion, or belief. So earlier I asked the question, how do we know if something or if an object is alive? So the answer lies on understanding cell theory and the postulates of cell theory. By being able to explain the postulates of cell theory, we'll be able to answer the question, how do scientists consider if an object is alive? So let's start with two scientists, uh, Robert Hooke and Anton van Leeuwenhoek. So Robert Hooke is the <coughs> uh, discovered uh, or not, uh, made a research of cork specimens in 1665 using his own designed light micro microscope. And in his discovery, he saw these tiny compartments on the cork and called them cells. So he's the first person to coin the term cell to describe the chamber like structures he saw under a microscope of a specimen of a cork. So and Hook made various drawings of that specimen and in, initially he thought that only plants and fungi are the ones made out of cell. It's not until that Anton van and Hook made similar observations in tiny living organisms. He realized that when you scoop up, for example, a pond of water and go and observe it under a microscope, he realized there are tiny things inside that water, you know, inside that liquid, and he called them animalcules. So Lewin Hook is also believed to be the first person to observe a red blood cell of various animals and even sperm cells under a microscope. So it is because of Lewin Hook that we also realized that this cell as Robert Hooke uh, coined, uh, is not only does not only exist in plants, but they also exist in animals. Particularly after he 
made observations of his animacules. So before we understand about cell theory, or after Robert Hooke and Ewan Hooke made their discoveries, there's not a lot of advancement that happened with uh, our idea or what we know now about cells. Because uh, before that, people um, supports the idea of what we call a theory of a spontaneous generation. So the theory of spontaneous generation basically says that living organisms can arise or can come from non-living objects. And this is because of uh, when we say, when we see a rotten meat, well, we just see meat, but after a few days we start seeing maggots on that meat or even you know, sa basura, kapag pinabayaan lang natin dyan, minsan makikita natin na there are some maggots inside there. But we didn't know then how these maggots or these living organisms came about in that garbage or rotting meat. And that's the theory of spontaneous generation. It purports that living organisms arise from non-living things. This is the issue with hypothesis, no? Wala siyang... Uh, walang experimentation yet we just observed something that happened and then we assume things so our hypothesis <clears throat> is that uh, living organisms came from non-living things it is not until that <clears throat> uh, scientists like Lewis Pasteur made uh, or disproved the theory of a spontaneous generation after he made various experimentation about uh, the existence of living organisms. So one of the researchers or scientists made a, uh, or you can do this on your own, no? for example, get a rotting meat, just a small meat, and leave it outside and covered, and eventually you'll see the maggots will start coming out. It's because of flies laying eggs on it, but if you covered it, at wala kayong makikita na mga maggots that are growing on that rotting meat or dun sa garbage. And that disproved the theory of a spontaneous generation. Now, after disproving the theory of a spontaneous generation, we know that organisms does not uh, arise from non-living objects. Another theory that a lot of people believe in is what we call is uh, a abeogenesis. It is also related to the primordial soup theory, which uh, says that life is started from a mixture of non-living organic materials. Uh, 3.5 billion years ago, it is believed that the uh, atomic, na, the air makeup and uh, water makeup of the earth is very different to what we have now. And because of this organic makeup of the earth 3.5 billion years ago, that created uh, the life that eventually evolved to what we have today. So that's basically what abiogenesis is. So because of these two theories not uh, that were believed, uh, not a lot of advancement were made uh, in our knowledge of cells and of living organisms. And till we had the following scientists that made discoveries and advancements, like example, Robert Brown in 1931, his leading botanist of his time that compared different kinds of plant specimens under a microscope. And he indicated that there's one common thing among these different plant species, and that is they are all composed of cell, which was first coined and which was first observed by Robert Hooke. So inside each cell, he also saw a dark a uh, spot, dark, dense spot, which he called the nucleus. Also, Matthias Slayden in 1838 made another, uh, made uh, also discoveries and investment of his own, which is, he's also a botanist, uh, which is a scientist that dedicates their time studying plants, and he concluded also that all plants are made up of cells. Theodore Schwann in 1839 also made advancements and discoveries and he's also a friend of Matthias Schleiden and again he's a botanist and he stated that all tissues are also composed of cells.
another uh, discoveries made in 1858 by Rudolf Virchow and he concluded that all cells come from pre-existing cells. So this also disproved the theory of the spontaneous generation where we now know that all cells must come from pre-existing cells otherwise there's no cells or hindi pwedeng uh, mag-exist lang bigla bigla yung cell without a parent cell. And that's how we came up with the postulates of the cell theory because of the discoveries and advancement of these various scientists, we, let's say, summarize them into three main postulates uh, for our cell theory. Number one, all living things are composed of one or more cells. So all of us, for example, the humans, are living things and they're composed of multi-cell we are multicellular cells and there are living things like prokaryotes that are composed of only singular cells so all living things are either one or composed of one or more cells number two our second postulates is that cell is the basic unit of life in all living things meaning all life must have or must exist uh, or they must have cells and last all cells come from pre-existing cells. So these are the three postulates of cell theory. So meaning this is what uh, this is the assume that we or this is the assumptions that we made of all the discoveries and using these postulates we can now answer the question how do scientists consider if something or if an object is alive? So if an object is able to pass all these three postulates, then the scientists will say that this object is alive. So this is the basis for all living creatures existing on the earth. So the question earlier, how do we know if a plant is alive? Well, a plant is composed as a multicellular organism and in order for a plant to live, its cells must function and it must uh, you know, produce all the energies that it needs, the proteins that it needs to survive. And plants come from another plant or its cells, if you observe, they uh, reproduce on their own. They create cells in their uh, plant cells, create another plant cells from that existing plant cells. So because of that, we know that plants are alive. The same thing with a person, even though in their comp situation, they're still alive. So that's how we know that something is alive because of the postulates of the cell theory. So that was our discussion earlier. So the three postulates offer the basis on how we consider if an object is alive or not. So that's the first lesson for today. It's very simple. Uh, throughout this week we'll be continue on with our lesson two so thank you for catching up and have a good day